Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Kano Tryharding Modern. Today we'll be playing Mono Green Tron, and um, we're playing the same. <laughs> Sigma, you're fine. We're playing the same uh, Green Tron list that I just played previously. I do like this list a lot, and I kind of want to get a couple more reps in it before I change it up at all. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and explain too much about this list. Suffice to say, it plays a lot of four ofs, and we're going to go ahead and take it into a constructed league. I was doing pretty good to uh, to start with. With a slightly better luck, I probably could have actually gotten in top eight. Um, we just had a really rough patch. <laughs> Seriously though, Sigma, I'm glad you could make it to this stream. It's uh, it's good to see your username popping up in in my chat. Seems like it's been a while. <clears throat> Alrighty. Going on to round one. Hmm. This is definitely not that great of a hand. We're gonna mulligan. Hmm. There's some chance this could work, but I'm gonna go to five. There we go. We'll keep. And I'm gonna put back a sphere and a star. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, kind of make this the regular thing again, do Wednesdays and Sundays. Um, it's it's kind of nice to have something in the middle of the week. Watch for Thoughtseize taking map. Oh, was I on the draw? <laughs> hey, no worries, man. It's all right. I'm glad, I'm just glad to have you pop in, that's all. Uh, Pona plays a Ledger Shredder. We draw an Oblivion Stone, play a tower, pass the turn. What sign? Why would I put signs up in my room when you know I can't read? Puddle plays a Misty Rainforest and a second Ledger Shredder. Okay. Let's go ahead and get a... Hers is mine. No worries, Draco. Uh, so we're going to play Hers is mine, and I guess this, really the only thing we can do is play this Ugin. You're not in a cage, Sigma. You're not in a cage. Okay, Puddle fetches up a snow covered island and spell pierces. That's unfortunate. We pass, sadly, with one mana left floating. Hi, Toki. How's it going? Uh, opponent attacks us for two. That's fine. I've got a 17. They play a Scalding Tarn. They crack Scalding Tarn. Shock Steam Vents. And they play a big old Murktide Regent. We draw a Chromatic Sphere. So play the Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. We draw Worm Coil Engine. Ancient Stirrings. Opponent gets to connive twice. We're hoping to hit a second tower here. That is not a second tower. Um, take power plant. Rest of the bottom. Play the power plant. Play worm coil engine. Yeah, I was trying for O stone. Um, if they have a counter spell, I'd rather them hit worm coil here. Okay. So the plan is hopefully my opponent is now out of action. They hit us for nine. Uh, we O-stone them, then we can resolve Ugin, basically unimpeded. Opponent dashes a Ragavan. Hits us for a bunch, we go to seven. Doesn't really matter what they exile off the top of our deck. Exile a Sylvan Scrying. They can cast a Sylvan Scrying if they want. We basically just have to dodge a second counter spell here. Okay, we get bolted. Opponent ditched two lands off Knives. We draw another tower. Play a tower. Play an O-stone. Pass the turn. Not sure if this is going to work or not, but we are waiting to crack O-Stone until our opponent's attack step because we want to not allow our opponent to cast the Ragavan that's in their hand with Dash. Blow up the world. Opponent passes. We untap and draw Blast Zone. That's actually super nice. So cast Ugin. Shoot our opponent. Pass the turn. We can crack Blast Zone to uh, kill any dashed Ragavans. Okay, opponent plays a Ledger Shredder. 
They, pull, they dash Ragavan and connive with Ledger Shredder. Okay. Ledger, Stra Ledger Shredder is still a 1 3. If for once they didn't have the counter spell, no worries. All right, Sigma, best of luck. We untap. We draw Karn. Um, we can just Karn for. Okay, first we shoot Ledger Shredder. We play Karn, and we get a Sundering Titan. Then we play a Sundering Titan, taking out all of their red mana. Pass the turn. So currently don't have to worry about any unholy heats or lightning bolts, and that's the game. Okay, so I think we do actually have to bring in the Force of Vigors versus our opponent. We drop an Oblivion Stone, a Worm Coil Engine, and I think another Worm Coil Engine, actually. Let's try it like this. <laughs> Sundere Titan notices your red mana. Ooh. <laughs> oh, disgusting. Uh, let's mulligan. This hand's not that great. <clears throat> this hand is significantly better, but uh, still really risky. Um, I think being on the draw, I'm actually fine to keep this. We're going to put back Ulamog. MC Todd, thank you for the resub. A resub for you, good sir? Well, thank you, good sir. Appreciate it. Opponent shocks a steam vents, plays a Mishra's Bauble, plays a Mishra's Bauble. Bobbles us on their turn. We untap, they draw a card. We draw a card. It's a Chromatic Sphere. Opponent bobbles our top deck again. We play Mind, we play Chromatic Sphere, and we pass the turn. Opponent considers. They untap, draw a card. They cast a Ragavan. It looks like they're representing a Spell Pierce here. So let's Sack Sphere for green. Ancient Stirrings. No lands in the top seven. Uh, we'll take Karn. <laughs> Pass the turn. Lovely. <laughs> Tarek, <laughs> I know exactly what you clipped. Yeah, it's, uh, it was it was not that great for my health. Opponent exiles a power plant off the top. Oh, that would have been so good. The expressive iteration. Let's see what they exile. They exile a steam vents. And they shock. Okay, Merktide Regent is also very bad for our health. Especially a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, we untap. Okay, we draw a tower. Play tower. Play map. Play sphere. <laughs> Pass the turn. I mean, it's not looking good. I don't remember hiring you. <laughs> uh. All right, looks like uh, opponent just makes a couple land drops. We untap. I just get power plant and die here, right? Like that's what happens. Well, we can try and scrying for another tower. Happy birthday! It's not my birthday. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Who is texting me? Alright, opponent untaps. And we're dead. <laughs> okay, on to game three. Um, no adjustments, run it back. I would like to play first. Uh, double tower is not really my idea of fun. I think we can do better. Mmm, going to five. Uh, it's really not that great, actually. Um, but fours are so much worse. And we gotta have a land in, like, the top nine cards, right? Right? Alright, we're gonna keep this. We're gonna put back Ugin and Sphere. So we'll play Power Plant, play Star, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Spire Bluff Canal. We draw a map. Cycle for green. We get a forest. Um, Ancient Stirrings. We do not hit a Tron land, which is quite disappointing. Uh, take a Karn, rest the bottom, play a forest, play a map. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays an island. Into a Ledger Shredder. Into a Bobble. 
for a connive. They ditch Snapcaster Mage. They bobble our top deck. We untap, they draw, we draw a tower. So play tower, play sphere, pass the turn. Okay, opponent goes to combat. They attack us for two. Take two and go to 18. And they pass. So I'm gonna sack sphere for green. And we're gonna map for mine. Untap. We draw another tower. So play mine. Play Karn. They have a counter spell. Play map. Opponent gets to connive. They ditch Jace. Um, I'm gonna play star. Cycle for green. And then I'm going to map for... I think it's gotta be Besiju, actually. Pass the turn. I'm worried about Blood Moon. But, like, we draw any Tron threat here and we're fine. Especially, like, Ulamog would be insane. Okay, opponent casts Raghavan, represents counterspell mana, hits us for three. We untap and draw Sphere. So play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green, we get Ugin. So play Tower. Play Ugin. Opponent gets to Connive. Hopefully they don't have another counter spell. Hopefully this is just a bluff. Okay, they ditch Ledger Shredder. Nope, they had another counter spell. All right, nothing to besiege you yet. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent considers. They're kind of running out of cards in hand. There's a lot of great top decks for us. Opponent plays a land. Attacks us for six. They exile Urza's Mine. That was not a great top deck, so I'm glad that they took it. They crack Misty for a basic island. They consider again, putting a Polluted Delta off of the Connive trigger into the grave. They mill the Spell Pierce. We untap. We draw a Worm Coil Engine. So play Power Plant. Play Worm Coil Engine. Hey, Mixon, how's it going? Opponent has an Archmage's Charm, too. Well, it's not going that great right now, because my opponent has, like, six counter spells, And we're going to be dead very soon. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks us for six. We go down to three. Opponent exiles an Urza's Mine, which was a bad top deck. We untap. We draw Karn Liberated. Well, attempt to play a Karn. <laughs> I mean, alright, you have nine counter spells, Tron can't do anything. Yeah, I'm sorry if the sound quality is a little bit worse. I have yet to completely get this room up to speed. Um, this is my new office I'm recording from. I have not had, like, any time at all to work on it. Work's been very busy. Um, but, you know, we're getting there. Actually, maybe if I pull this out from the wall a little bit, it might be a little better. But I gotta get some content recorded, and so I figured I'd start off today by uh, streaming some Tron. I actually have to work on actual work outside of work hours because I'm a bit behind of what I need to be doing. So this will not be a long stream. This will probably be a one league stream. Um, but hopefully soon <laughs> we can get back to regular content creation. Good long streams, and Kano can do silly stuff in front of a camera, and I'm looking forward to it. One league stream, four control matchups in a row. Uh, I mean, if I keep running into, like, really dumb control decks, I'm just going to start playing, um, like, Quadra Veil Sideboard. Except that doesn't do anything against the, um, like, the Narset Days Undoing deck, which the blue-white control list is, like, homogenizing on as a package because it's really powerful. Oh, yeah. That sounds like crunch time. Alright, I would like to play first. I mean, it, it happens. Uh, this is a mulligan. This is a keep. It's 
mine tower power plant. Put back expedition map. Uh, play mine, play map. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Misty Rainforest. Shocks a Hollowed Fountain. Prismatic Endings the map. Okay, so this is either Control or... Um, like Money Pile or something. The only decks I know to play this. Probably Money Pile, given the fact that that's a Wooded Foothills. Play Tower. Play Ugin 6. Opponent cracks Wooded Foothills. Shocks Breeding Pool. Has a counter spell. Unfortunate. Play Star. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Wooded Foothills. It's not control in your your estimation. Why do you say that? Uh, sack Star for Green. Draw a card. We get a Sanctum. Play Sanctum. Play Star. Play Karn. Sack Sanctum. Get Ulamog. No counter spells. I mean, not every control deck has to play counter spells, but I, I feel ya. Uh, take out Hollow Fountain. Opponent gonna cycle a Shark Typhoon for no value. They untap. Yeah, I mean it is like a tap out control deck. It's not like um, it's not like just sit back and hold up infinite counter spells forever. Yet it's somehow more boring than infinite counter spells forever. Uh, we untap. We draw a Worm Coil Engine. So Sack Star for green. We draw a Tower, which is like the God top deck. Play Ulamog. Pass the turn. Sounds like a combo. Yeah, it is like hard lock. It's like a hard lock combo. Okay. Opponent uh, casts a Ragamon. We untap. We draw an Oblivion Stone. Uh, go to combat. Attack for 10. Opponent exiles the top 20 cards of their deck. They chump with Ragavan. I could have O-Stone to just kill Ragavan and take them to one. Maybe I should have. Play O-Stone, play Worm Coil. Pass the turn. <laughs> it's like Mage throws a monkey at it. Opponent cracks a Wooded Foothills, plays a Stomping Ground, plays a Ragavan as a Chump Blocker. Alright. Uh, blow up the world. Yet again, Ulamog survives this. Alright. Uh, I think the Force of Vigors do actually have to come in. And we'll cut an Oblivion Stone, a Worm Coil Engine, um, and another Worm Coil Engine. Worm Coil is less good than the previous matchup. Opponent was probably hoping I didn't see the line. Uh, Karn Silex, the new Oblivion Stone-like card. Uh, I think it's interesting. I don't know... Um, I don't know if it's bad or good, actually. Um, I think it's, it's probably decent as a wishboard target for Tron, uh, but it's slower than... It's, it's like a programmable Nevenerals disc. It's... Uh, like, you destroy up to a certain CMC, but it enters tapped. I think two-thirds of Tron and Ancient Stirrings is probably good enough. So we're going to keep this. Um, the fact that, like, you can't play it and activate it immediately without some help is a uh, big downside. Like, or a non-zero downside. No, uh, you don't unless you already have, like, Tron assembled, right? But, um... Uh, like, I, I just genuinely don't know if the card is good or not. I think uh, I think it's actually going to be... It's going to be necessary to test it to make a real determination on it. Okay, we are going to go for the Sylvan Scrying here. Okay, it looks like opponent has the Counterspell. And it's too bad there's no, not really a deck that you can play that just punishes Counterspells. <laughs> I wish there was. I wish you could just play, like, anti-Counterspell Tribal, because it seems like every deck that isn't Hammer Time or Mono Red is playing, like, 12 counter spells. <laughs> yeah, so, like, that that's one thing to consider. Oh, we just naturally draw the, the Power Plant because we're, we're really good at this game. Um, play Karn. 
Wish with Karn. Let's go and get a um, liquid metal coating. Play coating, play sphere. Okay, pass the turn. Uh, stop on their upkeep, shut off triome. Glad to see that I updated my greed screen. Yeah, but mix them. It is, it is better in like the versus Blood Moon situation nine times out of ten. I think that's interesting. Because um, it takes less mana to activate to kill uh, Blood Moon effects, and it keeps your expensive artifacts around if you have any out. So, uh, let's start with an Ancient Stirrings. Uh, we can take a we can take a Karn Liberated here. Rest to the bottom, any order. Let's go ahead and blow up the Triome, and then we can. Cycle, Ancient Stirrings, try and find a power plant. All right, we got a power plant. Play power plant, play Oblivion Stone. Pass the turn. Sounds good, Tarek. <laughs> Appreciate the, uh, the warning there. I'll try not to let any clippable moments happen without you here. Opponent plays a Teferi Time Raveler. Bounces Liquid Metal Coating. Plays a Misty Rainforest, we untap. We draw an Ulamog. Let's go ahead and wish. And we're gonna go ahead and get a Sundering Titan. Play a Sanctum. And opponent doesn't want to play anymore. All right, we got him. I mean, that's kind of what we're hoping, right? Is we just have to get into a position where we can interact with their mana on a large scale and then Money Pile doesn't stand a chance. Sundering Titan versus the five color deck's pretty good. I'm very interested to see what, like, the final, uh, I don't know, I think there's about 60 cards left in the set that need to be spoiled, and I'm wondering if there's any good ones, um, specifically for, like, Mono Black or, um, Battle of Wits. Battle of Wits already got a card with the, uh, Deliberate that you can kick to make a Growth Spiral. Um, there were a few other, a few other cards I was considering for, for decks like that. I'm gonna have to update update Money Mountain again, and I'm sure that'll be expensive. <laughs> but I'm um, I'm looking forward to it. One of the upcoming sets won't be standard legal. Uh, do you mean the Lord of the Rings set? Uh, as far as I know, March of the Machines and Brothers War are standard legal sets. All right, I would like to play first. This is a mulligan. This is a terrible Tron hand. Uh, this is also a pretty awful Tron hand. One isn't standard legal. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, let me know, because I'm curious. I hadn't heard that. All right. We're going to keep this. Uh, we're going to put back a whole bunch of stuff here. Something. My opponent sent me a message. Aren't you the Tron guy? <laughs> I hate that that's what I'm known as. <laughs> Aren't you the Tron guy? Mind Sphere. <laughs> it's just smiley face. I like your videos. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, overgrown Tomb. Opponent Thought seizes us. Yeah, that's, I mean, pretty bad for my, my life. <laughs> you got old Mulligan before turn one Thought Seize. So I take it my opponent's probably playing, like, Yogg Combo, or Jund, or, like, some kind of rock deck. Yeah, Ancient Stirrings was definitely the pick there. We untap, we draw a second Karn Liberated. They'll never see it coming. Pass the turn! You see, that would just be straight up untrue. It does appear that my opponent is playing some sort of Jund deck. Alright, second Tron land off the top. Oh. My. God, show me the power plant. Pass the turn! <laughs> oh, yes. When in doubt, Tron him out. Right? Isn't that, the, isn't that the expression? I'm gonna get Assassin's Trophy on my draw step. Oh, my upkeep. I wasn't completely psychic. Alright, we draw Tower. Oh, <laughs> it, it was a Tron land, just not the one I hoped. Pass the turn! All right, opponent attacks us for two. Let's see what they exile off the top. 
Exile of Sylvan Scrying. That would have been a pretty good top deck for us, but we wouldn't have been able to cast anything if we had to cast Scrying that turn. Opponent's going to cast Scrying. Hmm. They get Besiege you. That's rude. You can't just get Besiege you every time. They Besiege you my power plant. Oh, we get our other forest. Uh, we untap. We draw another Karn. Play mine. Pass the turn. Good old Karn Tron. At least my opponent doesn't have a clock. Don't you Ren and Six me. Good, he untapped. See? He's scared of it. He's, I, I intimidated him verbally. Okay. Opponent rips a Worm Coil Engine off the top of our deck, which would have been a bad top deck for us. Now he's going to play Ren and Six. Oh! We can't beat that! <laughs> March of the Machines, The Aftermath. Comes out one month after March and will not be standard legal. Okay. Is it is it a direct-to-modern set, or is it just like a, a supplemental product, did they say? Um, I haven't seen a traditional Jund deck in ages. Let me think about this. I don't think Force really helps me against them. Neither does Chalice. There's some chance that Relic does. No, I think we just run it back and don't mulligan to four. Or if we mulligan to four, our opponent doesn't have Assassin's Trophy into Besiege you lock. I will say that hitting hitting Sylvan Scrying off the top of our deck to go get Besiege you was pretty sick. All right, I do want to play first. That hand is unkeepable. Mm, this hand really isn't keepable either. Uh. I'm gonna go to five. Almost. Okay, we are gonna keep this though. I'm gonna put back Ugin and Oblivion Stone. Porter! Porter, come here! The things that things in Aftermath will be standard legal, but the set itself will not be a standard legal set. So good luck interpreting. Porter! Where's my buddy? Where's my Porter? I hear him, he's on his way. We get to uh, Inquisition. Porter Pie, come here! Come here, Cookie Ninja says you're a good boy. Cookie Ninja says you're a good boy. Yeah, they do. Sorry if I woke you up, buddy. All right, we untap. Draw on Ancient Stirrings. Play Power Plant, pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays a Raging Ravine. Uh, we get Inquisitioned, tower off the top one time. Tower off the top one time, please. Show me the tower. Nope, Yami Maya. Uh, yeah, we'll play it out. Pass the turn. Opponent already has all green mana. That's okay. That's fine. I prefer him up here anyway. Okay, opponent plays a Liliana of the Veil. Gonna force us to discard. We're gonna discard six mana Ugin. Alright. Show me the tower. I mean, that's kind of a tower. But not. Uh, so we get a tower. Play the tower. Unfortunately, we cannot cast this Karn, and our opponent is going to force us to discard it. Okay. It's better to have Tron assembled, even with the risk of our opponent having an Assassin's Trophy, than it is to try and hold on to Karn. Um, okay. If we could top deck like a Sundering Titan, it might be pretty good. Expedition map, not as good. So, play Expedition map. Crack map. And let's get a Blast Zone. Play Blast Zone. Pass the turn. We can take that up to three and get rid of Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Liliana. So opponent gets to double rummage here. New Karn makes me sad as a Tron main. I mean, yeah, okay, so that Karn is not very good. I actually think he's got some potential, but probably not in Tron. Um, oh, the interesting thing they said is, in Brothers War, there's going to be more Power Stone Shard tokens. So there's some synergy there that is going to be a part of that set. Because if I recall, and my magic lore that far back is awful, but if I recall, it's something to the effect of the mana rigs like produce these power stones and that's what partially what the whole brothers war was like being fought over so there's some chance that like maybe there's something in that set that super breaks karn who knows but i doubt it it's a possibility though 
think it should have been used for colorless spells and not just artifacts. I mean, like I said, there's we're still we're still kind of waiting on. Um, what the Brothers War is brand, but... Okay, we lose the tower. We take two. Oh, uh, we top deck tower again. Well, it's... It doesn't matter, because... Oh, no, my opponent doesn't have Besiege yet. Um, we do have to blow this up immediately, though, because otherwise they ult Liliana, and we're very sad. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to make the case that the new Karn is good. I'm just saying that there's the potential for some synergy in the next set uh, that could make him good. Hey, Sissia, how's it going? Okay, opponent has another Lily. And a Goyf. Okay, Oblivion uh, Stone off the top, please. One time. The only time I can't cast him. I have nine mana, not ten. You just got you got two work or got off work or just obtained some work. I'm assuming you got off work. I'm just being a stickler. Uh, opponent's going to attack us for nine. Take nine, go to seven. I mean Ugin would be a pretty great top deck. Eight mana Ugin. Uh, that is not 8 mana Ugin, but we could still top deck 8 mana Ugin. Dang it. Dang it. We were so close both times. <laughs> or a forest. Close! <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's true, you, you kind of used to play, like, a bigger mid-range game than they would play. Um, I mean, like... There is more Tron hate now than there ever was, but Tron is still playable, is the thing. <laughs> this is... <laughs> uh, greetings, employees. Today we will be teaching our new safety class through ironic memes only. <laughs> <laughs> Round four, here we go. Now, employees. I want you to know that sticking your hand in the electrical outlet is not bussin'. <laughs> it's, we're going to six. Uh, we're going to five. All right. Uh, we'll keep five. <clears throat> we're going to put back uh, Sundering Titan and uh, Tower. I'm actually going to keep this for us. Play Power Plant. Play Sphere. Pass the turn. Opponent leads on a Scalding Tarn. Crack Scalding Tarn gets a Steam Vents untapped. And plays Dragon's Rage Channeler. We untap. We draw Ugin. Sack Spear for green. We draw another Power Plant. Play a Tower. Pass the turn. Hey, Mav. Good to see you. Opponent attacks us for one. We go to 19. We draw a Worm Coil Engine, which is not what we want to be seeing. Play Power Plant. Pass the turn. Opponent gets a Steam Vents tapped with their fetch land. They untap, play a Polluted Delta, and attack us for one. So it looks like they're just holding up counter spells until the end of time as their plan. Uh, we draw an Oblivion Stone. So play a Forest, play an Oblivion Stone. Okay, opponent bolts our face, milling a Murktide Regent. Gosh dang it, Murktide, I said no counter spells! <clears throat> All right, opponent untaps. Was there ever a time where they had to leave three mana up in a control deck in Modern? There was times you left up four for like Cryptic Command. Man, you remember those times? People used to play Cryptic Command because it was good? It was generally Mana League. Unless you were talking about Mana League, like trying to play around the Mana League. Oh, we draw another tower, which is yet again not a power plant. <laughs> or not a mine, I mean, excuse me. Yeah, trying to play around Mana League. Uh, we go to six, untap. Uh, and we die. Alright. Sucks. Um. 
I do actually have to bring the forces in. I'm not thrilled about it. I'm going to dump two Oblivion Stones this time instead of two Worm Coils. And we'll run it back. Wasn't the... Uh, is it... It's not... Um, it's not Contradict, because I think Contradict is five mana. Okay, we'll, we will keep turn three Tron. Um, the counter target spell draw card. There's one at four mana, and I don't remember what it's called, but I remember, uh, I think somebody asked Rosewater if it was too strong for modern, and he was like, yes. And I was like, we have Cryptic. <laughs> and Cryptic now doesn't see any play <laughs> at all. Uh, and it's not Bone to Ash, because it's counter target spell, not creature spell. So, play a tower, pass the turn. Opponent cracks Misty Rainforest. Gets a Steam Vents tapped. What is an artifact you want printed over the next year that would help Tron immensely? Uh, why do you assume I want to help Tron? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the question I'm asking you, athlete. Why do you think I want Tron to be better? Please free me from my torment of playing Tron. Um, I mean, hypothetically... Tron needs... Because you're the Tron guy. Um, I don't know. So for Tron to get better... For Tron to be better than it is, it either needs better threats, which it probably will never receive, um, because Karn Great Creator was not intended to be a Tron threat. Nobody thought about Liquid Metal Coating or Mycosynth Lattice when it was printed. And... Uh, like, the, the other ones that it got were kind of flukes, right? Um, or, Tron needs better consistency tools than it already has. Which, the last time we got one of those, it was banned. Once upon a time. Um, or a way to make Tron faster, like turn 2 Tron, exactly. And I mean, the original Tron deck in Modern used to play Explore. Um, but, like... Turns out Explorer in a deck that's playing less than 20 lands is not that great. Um, if we crack Sphere, we get nothing. Sylvan Scrying. Let's go get a Redundant Tower. Um, play Map. That actually would not be that broken, Athlete, because Prismatic Ending and uh, March of Otherworldly Light see a lot of play still. Uh, play the Tower... Go get a Blast Zone, and then play Oblivion Stone. Yeah, so like you either need better threats or better consistency tools for Tron to be better, or somehow to speed, like some way to speed up the Tron combo, as it were. Um, the problem is, I don't see them printing any of those things intentionally. <laughs> hey, Tentative Orch, you're not the first person to make that joke, actually, which is kind of concerning to me. Um... <laughs> Uh, Icy Devil, thank you for following. I appreciate it. Uh, opponent goes looting and destroys our Oblivion Stone. Just bring back Lattice. We do not need Lattice in Modern. We really don't. Because, like, uh, we really don't need Mycosynth Lattice in Modern because I, I was really, really tired of just control decks that would lock everyone out of the game instantly. It was so uncool. Is a 10-mana combo? It's not a 10-mana combo. It is a 6-mana combo that curves into itself. That's the problem. Cast Karn. Sack Sanctum. Go get Ulamog. Counterspell. Yeah, I'll never forget. I had a guy play Karn on turn 4, wish for a lattice. Turn 5, Giga draws all my lands. Turn 6, cast lattice. And I was like, we've gone too far. Like, the only deck that I thought that that was a fair thing to play was Battle of Wits, because, let's be real, that deck needs all the help it can get. Um, Alright, cast Ulamog, exile here and here. Okay, opponent has a counterspell. Uh, we'll play a Forest and a Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. I mean, like, that's... I don't know if they said that or not. I don't remember that being a reason. I'm not going to doubt you. I just, like, I don't remember that personally. But if that was a reason that was given, partially, like, it's a reason that can lead to overrepresentation of a deck, but it's still not a good reason. 
I don't see how that would help Tron. Ancient Stirrings. Uh, Karn, Grey Creator. Rest of the bottom. Play Karn. We get Counterspelled again. Play Blast Zone, pass the turn. Yeah, Ragavan's no fun. I don't know, nobody liked my opinion on the ban list, so... No, okay, so they're not talking about monetary cost there. The deck building cost is non-existent. So what that means is, if you play Karn Great Creator in any number in your main deck, in order to include Mycosynth combo, all you have to do is give up a sideboard slot. That has nothing to do about um, money. All right, we're getting subtleteed. Uh, I don't really want to redraw Worm Coil either, so I'm gonna put it on the bottom. No worries, it's fine. We take three, go to ten. We draw Karn Liberated. Go get him, Karn. I'm sensing a theme. All right, we take three, go to seven. We draw Eugene. Play Eugene. Finally, kill subtlety. I mean, like, that doesn't help Tron. Like, that's that's the problem. Like, it's it's a it's a nice to have, but it's not a thing that helps Tron. All right, let's Sylvan Scrying. Opponent spell snares my Sylvan Scrying. Seven lands is too much for Tron. <laughs> uh, Karn Silex. Uh, earlier this stream, I talked about it a little bit, and basically all I had to say on it was it is an alternative to O-Stone that fits in the wishboard. Uh, it has some pluses, it has some minuses. I don't know that any particular one makes it good or bad, um, and it's just worthy of some testing. Okay, play another Eugene. Minus seven to kill Murktide. It also shuts off fetches, is overall less mana to blow up something like Blood Moon than O-Stone, which matters a lot when you don't have Tron assembled. Um, and there's a few other points. Like, it's, it's not a bad card, but whether it's good, I, it kind of has to be tested. I, I will reserve judgment till, like, further judgment than that until I, uh, I get to play with it. Isn't Unstable Vault legal in Pioneer? Which is pretty close to O-Stone, but it's not O-Stone. Opponent ran out of counter spells. That was kind of nice. No, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Perilous Vault. That's the one. This is a mulligan. This is also a mulligan. Going to four! Alright, we got two-thirds of Tron. Let's do this. I want to rip Tower Threat right off the top. Come on, Tron gods. Alright, I mean, that works, maybe. Play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Opponent considers. Alright, we untap. We draw Ugin. Play Power Plant. Let's go get Tower. Pass the turn. Um... Alpine Moon and Blood Moon, basically. I haven't seen it in a while, so it's possible that I'm just sideboarding against a strategy they no longer employ, but I can tell you that the time that I don't have it is the time I'm gonna get beaten by it. All right. Play Besiege You. Sylvan Scrying. Let's see if they think that's important or not. I'm gonna get um, Sanctum. Because next turn, when I cast my Ugin, I can then tutor up the Sundering Titan I have in my main deck, and that should be theoretically harder for them to counter. I mean, if I draw another Tron land, I'd get an Ulamog instead, but... Okay, opponent's going to make a treasure and loot. 
I wonder if I should force that treasure. That's probably a bit aggressive, huh? But it might be the thing that allows them to play a threat and hold up a counter spell. Nah, I think we have to I think we have to just wait. Okay, Pota plays a bobble and a misty rainforest. Bobbles themselves, decides whether or not they want to crack that misty. They don't want their top deck. Okay, they play a Murktide. Okay, I'm actually going to do this. Because if their only counter spell was Archmage's Charm, that matters a lot. Okay, we draw an Ancient Stirrings. So, cast an Ancient Stirrings. Uh, I'm going to take Ugin. Because I play two different arts, I'm going to play this art. So they know that's the one I revealed, because they haven't seen this one. Uh, we are going to Sac Sanctum and get Sundering Titan. Hopefully this resolves. It does not. I hate that they're making me click twice to choose not to pay for something. I think it's a bug in the UI. Opponent untaps. Uh, you don't want to see hard lock enchantments like that, because that's very similar to... Uh, Contamination. Okay, we draw Karn. We're probably going to die because they probably have another counter spell, but this is our best bet here. Second Ugin. Okay. Pass the turn. No, so like, I think, I think Modern needs slightly better mana base hate than it's got. <sighs> Opponent hits an Oblivion Stone off the top of our deck. It's expressive iteration, so they're probably going to find Bolt. Uh, they found a Spire Bluff Canal. Did they find a Lightning Bolt? They did not. We untap. Uh, we draw an Ulamog, and that actually invalidates my plan of getting Ensnaring Bridge. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're dead. Oh, thanks, Orch. Well, let's see if we can win half our entry back. No, not like lands enter tapped. Uh, I, I want to see better non-basic land hate, because mana is just so free in modern. Like, you can play four or five colors with literally no drawback. You can play all of the best cards in your deck, and you're encouraged to do so. So, like, Prismatic Ending. Prismatic Ending is one of the best removal spells. If you're playing three colors plus, you can even splash white to play Prismatic Ending, and you can just answer any non-land permanent if you have the same amount of mana that they do. Up to five, right? which should be the end of the game in most modern games right now. Um, like, you can fetch a Tri-Land, you can have Domain on turn two. Like, there's there's so much free color fixing. I don't know that it needs back to basics either. But, like, Blood Moon, Blood Moon is the kind of hate that modern needs. Something that hates on non-basic lands. Not basic lands, Choke is a terrible card for des like design, because that, that punishes a player for playing a color uh, or basics of that color. Blood Moon punishes non-basics. Um, this is a mulligan. I can work with this. It's not great, but I can. Uh, and what that hate looks like, I don't know, but I'm going to put back Oblivion Stone. We definitely need something. Opponent leads on Arid Mesa. Uh, let's play Mine and Star. Pass the turn. Uh, price of Progress is n also not really what I want to see. Um, we need uh, something that like punishes people for searching, like Ashiok or Leon and Arbiter, but it has to be done in such a way that you can't just like get someone with a Ghost Quarter. Like It needs to be that effect, but balanced, so it's not abusable if that makes sense, which I know would be disappointing to people if they received it um, in the manner I'm describing. Or something that hates on lands with more than X basic land types, where X is like two. Oh, I don't think we need Stifle in the modern format. Definitely not a blue Stifle. Let's find a tower, please. Eh, none of those are tower. I'll take a map. Pass the turn. Like, I don't know what it looks like, is the problem. Because any anything that has existed in Legacy or Vintage for the purposes of hating on mana bases is generally too strong or would not fit the purpose that I'm trying to describe, if that makes sense. 
Like, Blood Moon is the closest thing. And Blood Moon really is not... Um, still not the right thing, if that makes sense. Oh, so we're against Hammer Time. Okay. That probably means we're dead. Uh, we untap. We draw another mine. Uh, so we can't do anything. And we're going to go ahead and pass to the next game. Also known as a concession. Okay, so... Definitely bringing the Force of Vigors in. Uh, Engineered Explosives, A Chalice of the Void are all coming into the main deck. We are dropping almost all of our Worm Coil engines and an Ulamog. Because Ulamog is kind of a... Uh, it's a bit of a stretch to imagine we can cast a 10 mana spell against a uh, <laughs> opponent that can kill us on turn 2. Uh, we'll cut one Oblivion Stone too to run 60 cards. Uh, now y'all are just trolling me. But seriously, I, I think, like, one of the things that got me to quit playing Standard when I was playing Standard was, like, the Khans Battle for Zendikar, I think it was, Standard, where everybody was playing five color, or four, like, variations of four color. And it was just like, you get to play all the best cards in the game in every deck. And it's like, wow, that's, it's pretty lame, actually. A Winter Orb remake? I mean, how do you mean, is, is the thing. As in, like, players can only untap a couple non-basic lands every turn or something like that, but basic lands untap just fine. You, you gotta be a little more specific. Uh, sure, we'll keep this. Does nothing against a, a fast hammer kill, but gives us a couple of looks here. Players can only untap one non-basic land per upkeep. So the thing is, even if it was like... If that effect existed at one or two mana as an artifact, it basically wouldn't do anything. Because it would either get answered immediately, if the deck cared about it, by a Prismatic Ending, March of Otherworldly Light, Force of Vigor, uh, Foundation Breaker... Like, there's a million different ways to destroy artifacts now, and a lot of them main deckable. Or, it would punish... I feel like it would punish your opponents too hard. I don't know, there's gotta be a fine line somewhere. It's, that's the tricky thing about the mana system, and that's one reason why I'm very sad that Fetches and Trilands exists. A lot of people don't... a lot of people don't like my opinion, and that's fine. Alright, well we have Tron. So play mine, play stirrings, and we'll pay for Esper Sentinel. And I guess I'll take Sundering Titan because it's a threat, but it's not one I can play right now past the turn. There's Burning Earth. Whenever a player taps a non-basic land, they take one damage. But that's a four mana enchantment. And I think if you decrease the price mana-wise of Burning Earth, you run into problems. Opponent Pithing Needles. They're probably going to Pithing Needle O Stone. Karn Liberated. Okay. Opponent plays a Giver of Runes. We take one. The problem is, how do you denote that, Sissy? Yeah, like I, get, I get what you're going for, and if you could describe it properly in, using the game language, I think that would be fine. Um, let's see. So, play an Urza's Tower. Play a star, pay for Esper Sentinel. Each land of that play, each non-basic land of that player's is the type selected. You could print a two mana Blood Moon, like a red red Blood Moon, with that text on it. That would be somewhat reasonable. Let's draw a card. We draw another Oblivion Stone. Play a Chromatic Sphere. Uh, go ahead and Ancient Stirrings. Let's get an Ugin, rest of the bottom, and play an Oblivion Stone. Pass the turn. Okay, Saga ticks up to two. They play an Ink Moth. They attack us for one. We take one, we go to 18. We untap. We draw another Oblivion Stone. So when this saga... 
completes, what are they going to tutor for? They can Pithing Needle Oblivion Stone. That would not be good. So, like, what is the Nightmare Scenario? The Nightmare Scenario is, like, their last three cards are White Land, Sigarda's Aid, Hammer? Because they would have just enough mana if they tapped Urza's Saga for mana to animate Ink Moth, play Sigarda's Aid, and just kill us. Um, let's play ultra safe here. Um, I am going to let them draw off this Esper Sentinel, because I need every last bit of mana I've got here. Crack Expedition Map. Blast Zone. Play Blast Zone. So now, if they get Pithing Needle, they can Needle Oblivion Stone, but then we Blast Zone and take care of, like, all of their permanents. They can Needle Blast Zone, and we still have enough mana to activate Oblivion Stone. Okay. If they activate Saga to make a Construct, I let that ability resolve and then crack Oblivion Stone. That's good. The only problem with that card design, I like, I actually think that would be an excellent one. But the only problem with that card design is, in paper, keeping track of what land can tap for what would be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, wait, what Athlete said. But I agree that that's, like, on track. Okay, I'm probably going to get an artifact. Springleaf Drum. Ornithopter. Lavinia. Each opponent cannot cast non-creature spells with mana value greater than the number of lands that player controls. Okay, but like... I can still cast Oblivion Stone, and I can still play Sundering Titan and take out two lands. That seems pretty good. I think we just O Stone here. Again. Okay, Pona plays a Pure Steel Paladin and a Paradise Mantle and a Hammer. They do not have Metalcraft though. We untap. We draw Karn. Um, so play Ugin. Sack Sanctum, get Ulamon. Kill Pure Steel. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. I mean, we could still die, technically. Opponent has three cards in hand. They could have had, like, Land, Animate, Ink Moth, uh, Core Outfitter. <laughs> we weren't safe. <laughs> Gets run it back. <clears throat> I am very tempted to keep this off of Force of Vigor alone, but I know that to be a mistake. So let's mulligan. This is actually slightly better. I'm going to keep this and I'm going to put back Karn. We have a couple of redraws and we have access to a Force of Vigor, which is potentially very strong. This is way better than our first hand because our first hand had like a Force of Vigor, a land, and then all threats. I'm not sure when, when they could have done that with all the disruption we had, but... Opponent mulligan to five, which is good news for us, I suppose. Hmm. Is this a gotcha? I only have two cards left in hand. Should have waited. Okay, we draw Karn, Great Creator. Cycle for green. Land? Not a land. Play star, pass the turn. That last turn, they just needed Pure Steel and a zero mana artifact to equip Ink Moth and swing. They were tapped out, though, by the time they got uh, Pure Steel on the battlefield. Or they tapped out to play the Hammer, I think it was. Okay, opponent's got a Stoneforge Mystic. They're gonna get Cauldra. Yep. Alright, so we gotta hurry up and assemble Tron. Force? Actually, no, it doesn't help. I needed it last turn if it was gonna help. Okay, land, please. That is not a land. So they're going to activate Stoneforge in response, basically because they have to. But, like, we have to rip Mine and Power Plant off the top in our next two draws that we're just done. 
We had a pretty reasonable chance of hitting any lands across the last, what, five draws? We just haven't. Ugh, yep. I think we lose. Because we're going to 10, then we get a draw, then we're going to 5, or 3, we get a draw. Yeah, that's. We're done. We are done. We have nothing that can save us. I don't know, I've been having a lot of bad luck with Tron lately. I'm not sure why. I don't think it's like the matchups or anything are particularly brutal. I just like have not been able to get Tron on time, or my opponents had like the nth piece of disruption where N is one too many. It's kind of disappointing, really. Yep. That is unfortunate. So, all right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. If not, please follow me on Twitch. I have the same username everywhere. For those of you who care to support me also, I have a Patreon, same username there as well. Uh, you should be able to find it. There should be links to any and all social media I use on all of my platforms. And uh, y'all are wonderful human beings and thank you so much. Uh, we went one and four. <laughs> we went one and four, Albo. Um, so, I know, Porter, you're a happy boy. You always happy. All right. I will see you guys next time. You're all wonderful human beings. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.